who's going first? You go first. Let's see, what does the first slide say? Uh, okay, Brian. Yes. Shipping highly performant web apps is critical to the business's bottom line. I absolutely agree. But further, I think the developers should be measuring the performance of their web apps in the lab, but also in the field. I also agree with that, but before we get into all that, I think we should at least introduce ourselves first. All right, let's go. So my name is Mike Ryan. And I'm Brian Love. And we are the co-founders of Live Love App. We're both Google developer experts in Angular and web technologies. And we have both substantially contributed to open source. Yeah, but mostly you. But we have both. But mostly you. So we want to talk about what the value of speed is and how the performance of your Angular applications affects your business's bottom line. And then from there, we want to get into how you can actually measure this performance, both in the field for your users on real devices, but also in the lab, in CI, and on our development machines. So Brian, I'm kind of curious. I'm an Angular developer. Mm -hmm. I'm building an Angular app. Mm -hmm. Why does speed matter? Let me tell you, I found a couple of really interesting articles. The first one that I found was Pinterest. Pinterest reduced the perceived wait time by 40% of their web app, and that resulted in a 15% increase in signups. Now that one's pretty interesting, but I think this next one is absolutely wild, like huge. A one second reduction in response time could cost Amazon literally 1.6 bill per year. Billion? Billion, that's crazy. But how do we measure the performance of our web apps? Well, we're gonna use metrics. And you might be wondering, well, what are metrics? Well, metrics are precise and quantitatively measurable. And we're gonna measure these metrics both in the lab, on our machines, as well as in the field, like on our users' actual devices. Now, metrics kind of fall into these broad categories. We're gonna measure things like the perceived load time of our web apps, the responsiveness of our applications, the runtime performance, the visual stability, and the smoothness of our web applications. I'm gonna focus on three metrics that are part of Core Web Vitals. Core Web Vitals are field metrics that measure important aspects of real-world user experience. And let me uh, show you what these are. Core Web Vitals focuses on loading, interactivity, and visual stability. For loading, we're gonna measure the largest contentful paint. For interactivity, we're gonna measure the first input delay. For visual stability, we're gonna measure what's called cumulative layout shift. Now let me break those down for you. Largest contentful paint, or LCP, is the time between the page load and the largest text or image block being rendered to the screen. Largest contentful paint measures perceived load speed. It reassures the user that the page is helpful. And we're gonna measure this both in the lab and in the field. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is the first input delay, or FID. First input delay is the time between the first interaction by the user with our web application and the response to that interaction. First input delay is gonna measure the load responsiveness of our application. It ensures to the user that our page is usable. And we're only gonna measure this in the field. Finally, let's talk about cumulative layout shift, or CLS. Now you might be wondering, what is cumulative layout shift? Let me give you a quick example. Have you ever been on like a news website or something and you start reading the, the article and then all of a sudden a banner ad shows up and pushes the article all the way down and just boom, it's like really jarring and not a great user experience. That's an example of a layout shift that's bad. So cumulative layout shift is when we measure all of these unexpected layout shifts that occur during the entire lifespan of our web app. Now, a layout shift isn't always bad. Maybe things like infinite scroll or other things like that can cause layout shifts. But a layout shift can be bad if the user is not expecting it. Now, cumulative layout shift measures the visual stability of your web application. It ensures to the user that the page is delightful. And we're gonna measure cumulative layout shift both in the lab and in the field. Now that I've talked about Core Web Vitals, the value of speed, and we've looked at some of these metrics, I wanna talk next about how we can measure in the lab, and then further, how we can establish a performance budget. Because measuring is important, but monitoring is also equally important. So let's talk about measuring in the lab. We're talking about resource quantities, metrics, and then we're gonna use Lighthouse to perform that measurement. 
When it comes to resource quantity, we're going to uh, measure things like the size or number of images on the screen, the number of web fonts, uh, the bundle weight of our application, our JavaScript that we're shipping to the client, and of course, the number of HTTP requests that we're making. Now, if you haven't heard of Lighthouse, Lighthouse is an open source automated tool for improving the quality of our web apps. Lighthouse runs in Chrome DevTools. We can use it in Node, on the command line, and if you go to PageSpeed Insights, it's also using Lighthouse. Lighthouse enables us to perform lab measurements of the performance of our web application. And it provides us um, measurements around the metrics that I just measured, uh, mentioned, as well as some additional ones. Lighthouse also provides some opportunities for us to improve the performance of our web apps, as well as some diagnostics. You can install Lighthouse with NPM. Now that we have Lighthouse installed, we can start running some analysis and doing some lab measurements uh, you know, locally on our development machine and, and looking at uh, kind of some of these metrics and what we're getting. And I think that's really valuable and should be, you should be doing that. But I think what we also need to do is monitor that. And we can do that using performance budgets. To get started with Lighthouse and performance budget, you're going to create a budget.json file. And here's what that file looks like. Now, I'm not going to go over every line of code here. The key takeaway here is that you can configure performance budgets using Lighthouse for your web app. In this example, I'm setting a budget of 10 for third-party resources. In this next example, I'm setting up some kilobyte limits for JavaScript, as well as the total amount of resources in my web app. In this next example, you can see how I'm setting up some budgets around time to interactivity and first meaningful paint. And we can run this on a command line using Lighthouse and give it uh, you know, the uh, local host or whatever, wherever we're running our web app, as well as the path to the budget file. Finally, I should also mention that you can run Lighthouse in CI, which is really a great way to measure and monitor the performance of your web app, so that way you don't have regressions. Next, Mike's going to talk, uh, talk to us about how we can trust lab measurements, but we really need to be verifying those in the field. That's right, Brian. We want to ensure that the apps that we are shipping are really delightful for our users, that when they run it, it's really performant and responds well to them. And to make sure that we're doing this, we're going to introduce field measurements into our Angular application. Now, field measurements are going to differ from lab measurements in a few critical ways. First off, a lab measurement is really good at reducing the risk that we ship a regression to the performance for our application. Right? These are running during development time, and they're making sure that we don't add code that accidentally causes performance to slip. But it's just reducing risk. Like Inevitably, you're going to cause something to regress in the performance of your application. And a field measurement is really great at detecting when regressions are shipped to users. Another key differentiator is that a lab measurement is integrated with CI and developer tooling. We're running it when you open up a pull request via CI or locally when you create a build. Field measurements, on the other hand, are integrated directly in the application source code. They're measuring performance in real time as users are interacting with the app on the user's actual device. And that last point is really, really key because a lab measurement can only approximate the user's actual experience with the app. Since we're running lab measurements on our beefy MacBook Pros or in a CI environment, they're rarely indicative of the actual performance users are going to experience when they're using their older handsets with lower performance or they're out in some field with a 3G quality connection. The field measurements, on the other hand, are actually going to detect what the performance is like in both ideal situations and the unideal as well. So in order to collect these field measurements, we're going to need a tool to capture real user performance metrics in our Angular apps. Now, there are so many tools that Brian and I love in this space, everything from Sentry to Perfume.js to New Relic. But the one we're going to highlight in this talk is Firebase's Performance Monitoring SDK. The Performance Monitoring SDK is going to allow us to do a couple of things. First, we're going to be able to instrument our Angular applications to monitor the performance of those core web vitals that Brian mentioned. We can also use this SDK to create custom traces that we can monitor as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to collect all this performance data, and we're going to pump this all up into Firebase. And from there, we're going to, be able to use Firebase's performance console to analyze the results to make sure we've not shipped a regression to our users. Now, one of the big reasons that I love Firebase's performance monitoring SDK is that the pricing is absolute fire. 
I mean, it's free for any size Angular application. That means you don't need budget approval from your boss. And what's great is you can use Firebase's performance monitoring SDK without using any other Firebase feature. So like if you don't want to use Firestore or Auth or Analytics, that's totally OK. You can just use performance monitoring in your app. To use the SDK, we're going to need to do three things. First, we need to install the SDK. And then we're going to add custom performance traces to our application. And from there, we're going to analyze the performance data that we're collecting. So installing the Firebase SDK is pretty straightforward. Step one, make a Firebase project. Give it a name and choose a web app as the project type. From there, you're going to ng add at angular slash fire. The add schematic gives you a really powerful wizard to configure every aspect of the Firebase SDK, along with allowing you to choose which SDKs you actually want to enable. When you're going through the wizard, make sure you pick the performance monitoring SDK. You'll know you've done the right thing, because when you go inspect your application's root ng module, there'll be two noticeable changes. First, it'll have configured the Firebase app with all of your project's configuration settings. And second, it'll have set up that performance SDK so that we can interact with the performance APIs. From there, we're kind of good to go. Like, it's already doing a lot of the performance monitoring that we want. We can play with the app a little bit and go into the performance dashboard and see that it is collecting data about a lot of those core web vitals that Brian's already mentioned. But you'll note that there's actually one where it's not collecting data, and that's at that first input delay. And well, Brian did say we wanted to measure this one in the field, so we need to figure out what's going on here. And it turns out it's a simple fix. We just need to polyfill the ability for the SDK to actually measure first input delay. And thankfully, the Google Chrome team has a great package called the Web Vitals Library that polyfills browsers so that we can monitor and measure these core web vitals. After you've NPM installed it, you're going to do something a little unusual for an NPM package. And that's that you're going to go into the polyfill.js file in the dist folder, and you're actually going to inline the contents of that file directly into the head of your HTML document. Now, this step's really important because we want the, the polyfill to perform correctly. It needs to run basically immediately before any other JavaScript runs and before the browser has a chance to render anything. In doing it this way, we're ensuring that it's getting a really great reading on cumulative layout shift and first content full paint and largest content full paint and first input delay. So it's a little weird, but it kind of makes sense when you think about all we need to do to make sure we get really valid measurements here. Once you've done that, you're kind of good to go. At this point, the Firebase Performance SDK will be monitoring all those core web vitals. And you can pretty much stop here if you're satisfied. But what's great about this SDK is you can take it a step further, and you can actually add custom performance traces throughout your Angular application. For example, in this Angular component, I am signing a user in anonymously using the Firebase auth SDK. And I'm curious, like in the field, how long does this take for my actual users? Well, I can measure this by importing performance in trace from the Angular Fire performance SDK. I can then inject the performance service into this component. And using the performance service plus the trace function, I can create a trace object that will let me measure how long it takes to sign in anonymously. Using this performance object, I call the start method on it, which will start the measurement. And then after I've done some bit of work, I can call the stop method on that performance object to stop measuring. And what that'll do is that'll collect data about how long that entire measurement took, and that'll send that to Firebase. And what's great is that that data is available in near real time. We can then go into Firebase's performance console and monitor that new custom metric. So let's talk about how you analyze performance data using Firebase. Well, you go into the console and you just pick a metric that you want to monitor. So here I've got first paint loaded up, and I can see how long first paint is taking for all of my users across some specific time zone or time boundary. And what's great about this console is I can then filter this data even further. So now I'm looking at how first paint is on all of my users with a 4G quality connection. And I can really start to filter down and understand how performance is changing for a variety of user characteristics. For example, here I've got a custom trace that's monitoring the response time of my GraphQL API. And I've narrowed it down so that I'm only looking at users that have a 4G quality connection on Google Chrome via in the United States, letting me really hone down on this, on this performance metric. Once I have all my performance data collected in Firebase, I can then go into Firebase's performance console, and I can create a dashboard highlighting my top six performance metrics that are critical to my business. 
Now I can use this tool to monitor for any regressions that might have accidentally shipped and gotten past our lab measurements. So using Firebase's performance monitoring tool, I instrumented the Angular code so that we're measuring all those core web vitals. And we had to install a polyfill to do it. We were also able to instrument custom performance traces and send those up to Firebase. We're collecting all of that data, pushing it into Firebase, and then we're opening up the console and we're able to analyze all those results to make sure that we have not shipped a regression in our application. And so we highly recommend using any kind of real performance monitoring tool to measure the metrics that verify that you're shipping really delightful user experiences back to your users. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that about the Firebase Performance SDK. Yeah. I think the key takeaway for uh, people that are listening today is that shipping highly performant Angular apps is just, it's good for their bottom line. Absolutely. And what's great about it is that you can measure and monitor the performance of your Angular applications using lab measurement tools like Lighthouse or field measurement tools like Firebase's performance monitoring, all for free. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming to our talk. We are Live Love App, uh, and we would love to help you find absolute joy in shipping apps. Come check us out at liveloveapp.com. Thanks. See ya. Thanks, y'all. Hi, I'm Joe Weems. Thanks for checking out this video from Enterprise NG 2021. Online conferences were great, but it's time to get back in person. See your old friends, make some new ones, and take your career to the next level. Head over to ngconf.org to get your ticket. See you there.